Hi there, Cedric. So are we going to see a major violation of privacy rights? Well, Anissa, that's what I'm going to try to find out here from Wayne Madsen, who is a frequent contributor with us. Uh, Wayne, so let's talk about this. Uh, NSA, Microsoft, what's the deal here? Well, it's really nothing new. We've seen uh, deals made between the National Security Agency and Microsoft in the past. As a matter of fact, for a number of years, there has been a Microsoft liaison office, office at uh, the National Security Agency to serve this uh, cooperation that goes on. Uh, we're, we're talking about Windows 7 now, but back when Windows 95 came out and Windows NT, uh, there was a lot of talk that there was an NSA backdoor for the use of cryptography to encrypt things like email, for example, in what's known as a cryptographic application program interface. Now, NSA and Microsoft de de denied there was anything uh, involved with either Windows 95 or Windows NT and this backdoor, except when somebody looked at the code written by the Microsoft programmer, lo and behold, that program interface was called NSA Key. Microsoft tried to explain it and said, well, that was because we intended to use it for uh, an NSA application. Well, they basically admitted that that kind of uh, negotiation and uh, whatnot was going on. But uh, it's nothing new that we're hearing uh, information about deals being made uh, to allow uh, NSA uh, an easier time at reading email and tracking people's uh, surfing habits on the Internet. Okay, well, then that brings up another point. You know, when the, the layperson at home hears about the national uh, security, uh, I'm sorry, the NSA, uh, dealing with a company like Microsoft where they have an operating system installed a computer from Microsoft, then all of a sudden the questions of privacy start popping up, too. Are these legitimate uh, questions of privacy? Uh, <clears throat> these are legitimate. It must be, uh, it's got to be stressed that NSA has now three missions. Uh, they've always had a mission of uh, basically spying on uh, foreign communications. Since 9-11 uh, and the passage of the Patriot Act, those lines now between what's foreign and what's domestic have basically disappeared. Uh, they also had the job of uh, uh, protecting U.S. Uh, message traffic and secrets with, by creating our own uh, cryptographic systems. And now they're in this role of cyber, uh, cyber security. Uh, now, the question is, what constitutes uh, protective information security, or what they call defensive information uh, warfare operations? What's the difference between that and offensive information warfare operations? When we're looking at offense, yes, we're looking at NSA hacking into systems, reading emails, uh, looking at people's surfing habits, and maybe even hijacking websites to, to put their own information on the websites. Okay. Uh, so it sounds like you're, what you're telling me is this is both a two-pronged operation where it's a defensive measure. Yes, that's what the company line is. Yes, this is a defensive measure, but they may be going a step further and playing a little bit of offense with this and trying to go in and, and perhaps possibly violate people's privacy. Well, the issue is that, yes, they do have a mission now that uh, the director of NSA has also been named by President Obama as the head of the new cyber command for the United States military. Absolutely, this is going to be a huge uh, operation okay. by NSA to do this type of thing. Okay. Well, Anissa, you heard that uh, right here from uh, Wayne Matson that uh, this sounds like this is more than just a defensive measure for between the NSA and Microsoft. Uh, in the meantime, we'll go ahead and send it back to you there in Moscow. All right, Cedric Moon breaking it down for us with our contributor Wayne Matson in Washington. Thanks for that.